Hello, I'm Laura Berlage of Arendelle Tapestry Studio. Today, in this tutorial, we are going to take our bird. I'm working on a blue bird, but you may be working on a different bird. And we're going to add the feet, the beak, and the eyes. And that's what's going to make our little bird pop. It'll be extra cute and special. So at this point, I'm going to start with the beak. Now, most of the felting we've been doing to this point We've been laying the wool fairly flat onto the shape that we're working, which is fine when you want to add layers that are fairly smooth. For a shape where it's going to protrude out from the rest of your project, I find that it works best to have the wool go perpendicular from the surface you're working on. So for instance, I'm going to start my beak with the wool facing away from instead of laying it this way and trying to work. And just like we've been doing with all of our other shapes, we're going to define the edges. So a beak has an arc across the top, it has two points, and it comes to a center point under the chin. So that's what we're going to start by defining. So first I'm just going to get my sh shape tacked down right at that spot where all of those points were meeting at the front of the face. And I'm going to start now by defining that arc around the front. So my left hand is just feeding in the wool as I need it, not pulling on it at all. So we get that arc going across the top of the face. Then come and bring that point right here where the blue meets the white. I'm drawing that point. And flip them over. Come to a point over here on the other side. See my wool's already getting shorter. And then down here at the chin, create the bottom point. So this helps the beak from becoming a mess as you're working. Always if you define your edges first and then build your shape from there, you'll have a lot more success with your shape. So I'm just continuing to feed the wool into that shape that I've defined until I start to get a beak ball. Pulled all that wool in towards but I've never gone straight in from the middle. I'm always working out here on the edges. And now I've got this ball, so I'm going to come right to the edge of my foam, start to work at it from the sides, and keep flipping him, keep turning him, work, start to work that beak into shape. Flipping and turning. Don't do this with your hand behind. Watch where your hand is. Flipping and turning. So I'm working that into a point. If you go all in one direction, um, you'll get a flat beak. So I'm just keep pivoting and turning. There, now I can come back to working at them from the front. Again, pulling it into my defined edges of my shape. And I want my beak to be pretty firm. And then if you want to get extra special, you can create the definition line from bottom beak and top beak. And you just do that by gently needling right along that line where it would be the differentiator from the top and the bottom. Right along that line. Back and forth. And we'll flip it over to that on the other side. Back and forth. Right from that side point out to the end causing that part of the wool to knit up just that little bit more. Tightening up the bottom beak. And I'll tighten up the top beak. We 
making sure it's still fairly square on his head. There. And also, because of all that pokey in this direction, it's pulled this part of the face in, causing the cheeks and the forehead to get a little bit more puffed out, which is also what I wanted. Next, we're going to do the feet. And it's helpful with the feet, because they're going to help your bird stand, to find out where does my bird want to go. This one's going pretty straightforward. Sometimes they lean to one side. If you do this on the foam, the foam compensates. So it's easier to look at this if you do it on the table. I'm going to take two, not two big pieces of wool. Again, if you get them even when you start, it's a little helpful. And I'm going to lightly roll them. They turn into little ball shapes. And my bird is face blinded. So I'm going to play with where would be the right placement for my feet. That's looking pretty good. So it won't fall over. So I'm holding them there, bringing them back. Obviously, I don't want to put a foot on a wing. I want to put a foot where the feet would actually go. Right here underneath. And I start by tacking down the back sides of the feet because this part's flatter, and then the feet are going to toe up in the front. So get these tacked on well so they're not going to pull off. Paying attention to the edges of that little V in the back of the foot. I got my feet started. Is that still going to hold them? Aim outward a little bit so they're not, doesn't become one big foot. We still have two individual feet. Then I can begin to draw this part of the foot in and attach the top part into the body. It helps that we rolled it into a ball shape to begin with. And now I'm forming the actual shape of the foot. Firming it up. I want them to be fairly similar. In shape. They still work? Yes, they do. It stands up. Excellent. Now we're going to get ready to do the eyes. And this is the part that really makes the bird for me. It's also the reason why we didn't put a foam core in the head. And that is because we're actually going to sink those eye sockets in. And if there was foam in there, it, this would be much harder to do. So, I'm going to pick where I'm going to put my eyes. I'm going to put one here. And then I need to make sure I put the other one at the same point on the other side. And then I'm going to go and just really poke that eye socket point. In a pretty small defined area, I'm going to follow it back along the cheek a little bit and I'm going to follow it in towards the beak. And just really work that in where my eye is going to go. And see how that has changed 
the shape of the bird's head. Now I'm going to repeat that on this side, making sure I'm going in the same place, opposite, so that I don't the lopsided birdie head in towards the beak, follow the cheek, and work the eye socket. go. Flatten out the top of his head a little bit. Compensate. And really brought a lot more character to our bird's face. Look at that. Now we're ready to add the eyes. So you take your thread and leave it doubled. Don't tie a knot at the end. Just leave it there. And we're going to go in from the back of his head. I'm going to aim for our first eye socket. It may take a couple of tries before you end up right where you want to be in that eye socket. There we go. Pull that through. And we'll take one of our eye beads, thread that on. Make sure you leave enough thread in the back. And then we'll go from one eye socket across the head to the other eye socket. Good thing this is not a real bird. Sounds so cruel. Pull the first one in snug. Thread on your second eye bead. Stay here, little guy. I'm going to kind of come back through the head, back out as close as you can to where you started may have to squeeze the head a little bit to get that needle to where you can grab it. Pull that snug. Then tie a square knot right over left. Snug but not too tight. Left over right. And trim it. Now you have this knot on the back of your bird head. So what we're going to do is we'll take a little bit more of our original blue, or whatever the color of the back of your head of your bird is, and we'll lay a patch over that. So not only will that not completely disappear, but we'll felt into it so that it's not going to come apart. All gone. No not. And there's our little friend. Yay. Now if you have invested in one of these clover finishing tools with 40 gauge needles in it, this is a good time to just go over the whole piece. Helps firm up the edge. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. You can just do some extra needling with your 38. Just crisp it up. If there's any little adjustments you want to do to the shape, go ahead. Just be careful around the eyes so that the needle doesn't get hung up or broken. There you go, your finished bird. Happy felting.